all them damn big words he was using and you don't know what that mean? You don't know what that mean? Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do something new and something I'm really excited about. So basically I'm going to be doing a series called Blab and Beat. And if you guys have watched any of my chit chat get ready with me's like, um, what's the one that I've done? I've done one on Summer Walker and Tank. I've done one on, what's it called? Performative activism. If you watch those, you guys know that I am very opinionated and I like to talk about those things. So basically what I wanted to do for this series is called Blab and B is that I'm going to talk about those you know those kind of topics and stuff while I do my makeup but I'm just not gonna talk about my makeup so it's not gonna be a super long video hopefully fingers crossed because I'm reducing the amount of time by talking about my makeup but it's just like rant with me talk with me let's chat and stuff like that I'm really excited about it because these are the kind of videos I like to put out but I think that people get turned off because the videos are so long so fingers crossed that these videos stay nice and short but I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know if you like this video. Let me know what kind of topics you want me to talk about. Um, so yeah, if you want to see me do this beat and talk about some foolishness, then just keep watching. All right. Hey guys. So let's get started. This is going to be very weird for me to like just talk and not talk about my makeup. My camera looks crooked. So today I wanted to talk about the... TI Red Table Talk. Well, specifically we're gonna talk about the TI Red Table Talk per se, but we're gonna talk about the TI thing as a whole. So basically, if you don't know, TI said, hold on, I thought I, I'm fooling myself, but I think I can do my eyebrows and talk at the same damn time. Sorry if my wig looks like it's just sitting real high on my head. I need to rebraid my hair because it's not flat in the crown. Anyway. So basically, the whole TI thing, you probably heard by now, and probably why you clicked on this video. But TI said in an interview that he goes with his daughter to the gynecologist to and has like gets reports on the state of her hymen so he can tell whether or not she's a virgin. So obviously this fucking blew up and people were going crazy, rightfully so, because one, it's an invasion of privacy to be <laughs> your doctor's gynecologist. And from what I read, he forced her, like he didn't force her, but he kind of coerced her into approving um, that stuff being said to him, being sewn to him, because you know, you know how your parents are. So, he did all of that. People were going crazy at him, like I said, rightfully so. And also, a very important thing to know, I think all of us vagina holders and more know that your hymen could is not is not a reliable teller of whether or not you've had sex. Um because it could it could be opened by falling off a horse or by playing sports or it could you could be having sex and it still isn't all the way open that shows that you've had sex so whatever so yeah he did all of that people are blowing up so he went on the red table talk um and if you don't know the red table talk is a show on facebook with jada smith uh jada smith's mom i think i'm not sure whose mom it is somebody's mom either jada or will smith's mom and usually will is on there too but she wasn't on this episode um and i don't watch i'm gonna be real i don't watch red table talk all too often um i've seen clips of it so yeah so let's let's talk about ti being on i'm not gonna do like a full run through because one i only watched it once so i really don't i didn't retain enough to tell you play by play what was talked about on the show i did take notes um so i remember some things and whatever so it's on the show and my first thought as like they're introducing and they're whatever saying hi and greeting each other i'm like why are we talking about her hymen again and she's not here to speak for herself but from what i gather later on on the show 
I'm guessing that she didn't want to talk to about it. I don't think because that he basically said at one point like he wasn't responding to any of the backlash at first because um, his daughter Deja had asked him not to. And he wasn't going to say anything until I'm guessing his, uh, what's it called, publicist or whatever told him he needs to do something about it. That's what he said. He needs to do something about it. Um, but he wasn't going to respond to it at the request of Deja. So I'm going to guess that that's why she's not there. But I knew a lot of people were like, well, why wasn't she on the show? It's her damn vagina. But I'm going to guess that she didn't want to be on there. Um, I don't know much about his kids, but I, and that's the thing. I don't know much about his kids. I don't feel like they're in the line like that, like that to begin with. Sorry, I keep saying, um, a lot. It, it's a real bad habit of mine. And then I was like, well, why the hell is Tiny there? Because Tiny is not that girl's mother. Where is her mother? But, um, from what I've seen, this was like a, T.I. and his and Tiny were on there. It was like a three part series and it wasn't only about Deja. The first part was about Deja but not the whole thing. So I'm guessing that's why the mother wasn't there because they also talked about the relationship part um, problems in the last two parts. And the first part was just about Deja. But those are my two things at first, was why the hell is Deja not there and why the hell is her mother not there and why is Tiny there? So, mind you, Tiny didn't add shit to this conversation about Deja. Like, she was not relevant. She spoke like three times, I think, and wh what she said didn't add anything to the discussion so the first thing that he said was that he claims that he was embellishing his story a little bit like he was just joking when he said that he goes to the gynecologist with her and forces her and you know gets a report like he was just making a joke about being a good parent <laughs> i don't feel like that was a good joke in my, in my humble opinion, I don't feel like that was a good joke. And I don't think he was joking, if we're being real. I think that he, that, that that's the best that his publicist could come up with for why he said that bullshit. Because they didn't, from what I read, I don't think he was joking and it was taken the wrong way. Like, he sounded dead serious. And also on top of that, um, Deja was on Twitter favoriting tweets against what the hell was going on so if it was a big joke you know she didn't sound it you know she didn't tweet anything specifically um probably because she didn't want to get in trouble with her controlling ass father but i don't know just from the likes of her twitter i just don't feel like it was a joke i feel like it was something that really happened and i just feel like Pete, the his his publicist could have come up with something a little bit better than that then i was joking um because if he was joking, that's something that would have come up immediately. Like, like, we know it's very common for, like, journalists and stuff and other news out any type of news outlet to cut stories in a way that make th things seem like they were said that weren't said. And that's very common. But it after the uproar, somebody is going to, let's say it was an interview, somebody's going to watch the interview all the way through and be like y'all that's not what happened and it'll get cleared up real quickly so if he was joking and the interview was just cut or typed in a certain way to make him look bad that would have been came out by now and that's the first thing i would have personally said instead of remaining silent was i was joking y'all need to read the full interview y'all need to watch the full interview because that's not what i said and that's not what i meant that's what i would have said anyway so that wasn't adding up to me at all <laughs> not at all i feel like that was a very just not well thought out plan here okay then he says that it's not present day and like he was doing that basically when she was 15 and 16 which to me again not better not better at all um just because she's 18 now it doesn't mean when she was 15 and 16 you had the right to know about the state of her vagina in such a way you didn't have the right to that anyway even when she was younger like that wasn't your right to do that so and then that's the thing were you joking or not <laughs> because you just said you were joking and now you're saying that that's not present day i used to do it basically when she was 15 16 when she was not an adult um but you just said you were joking sir 
you just said you were joking. And then he says, he says that his daughter welcomed his presence there. Like she wanted him to be in the, in the, the room, that she was okay with it. Again, not adding up with what, the stuff that she was favoriting and liking on Twitter. And again, she didn't tweet anything, which I could understand. So this is all, What's the word I'm looking for? This is all like our, this is all my interpretation of the fact that she was liking certain tweets that were speaking out against him. So I just don't think that, that you were really welcome there. It was probably, I feel like I can't say no. So of course I'm gonna say yes. And if that's the case, then you were not welcomed. You just were not reading the room right. So, and again, I thought this was a joke. Like, I, <laughs> he really said that. So I'm kind of just confused as to why he, I don't know, and nobody called him out on that. That really bothered me. He literally just said it was a joke, but now he's continuing as if it wasn't a joke and he was really doing this. So you didn't even stick to the, the script that your publicist gave you. <laughs> so something, this is like kind of off topic, but something that I really bothered me throughout this thing, or not bothered me, but like once I noticed it, I couldn't stop thinking about it, is that T.I. has like a large vocabulary. He was definitely reading dictionaries and shit while he was in jail. Um, he has a very large vocabulary, but somehow he still sounded dumb as hell. Like, I can't explain why the fuck I thought that he sounded s dumb as hell, but he sounded dumb as hell. The words were being used, but it was being used in like, like you can tell when someone is authentic, like has an authentically large vocabulary, but it was like, this man took such a simple ass sentence, like I ran to the park and went and took a rant typed it into Google, ran synonym, and picked the largest word he could pick for ran. All right, now this. Two, did the same thing, like that's how his shit sounds. It doesn't sound, like it doesn't have like a, the normal flow of someone speaking, it just sounds kind of ridiculous. Another thing that really pissed me off is that this nigga quoted Malcolm X for no reason. Like he just quoted him to quote him basically. And he quoted that Malcolm X, um, Damn near everybody knows. The black woman was the most disrespected, disregarded, um, so on and so forth, woman in America. And he disregarded, he said all of that to tie in about little little boys, little, gr bo little grubby boys defiling his child. And I was just like, that's not what Malcolm X meant when he said that, that part right there. <laughs> That's, I just don't think that's, that specifically is what he meant. But the thing that really, like, I really want to touch on, the thing that really bothered me was the part about how he talks about little, little boys defiling um, and destroying his daughter. That's what he was trying to avoid. And we really need to have, like, a conversation about the language that we use in regards to sex. More specifically, the way that we talk to girls about sex, you know? Because why is sex defiling and destroying your daughter? Like, yes, sex is serious, um, because it's not nothing, but I definitely think that you should develop your own views on it outside of the way that we talk to young girls about sex. Like, the language is just really absurd. <laughs> And like he was saying stuff like I, I want her to be she should be afraid of what comes from sex and it's like yes there are risks with sex like I said with STDs STIs um, pregnancy if you're you know you're not ready for that but to say that she should be afraid of what comes from sex it just reminds me of how Angela Simmons literally like just a week ago I think um, was doing an interview and she talked about how she lost her virginity at like 28 or something. I don't remember how old she is um, or how old she said she was, but she was an adult. She was well an adult. She lost her virginity at 28 and she was saying how she felt guilty and stuff, especially because she got pregnant the first time she had, she had sex, I believe. She was talking about all the guilt and stuff and it's just like, that's what him saying she should be afraid of what the risks that come with sex like that's the vibe it was giving me that's what deja is gonna that's the outlook that deja could have is that i should be afraid and like angela simmons was again an adult <laughs> who could care for herself and could care for this child that she had and yet she felt bad and it's just like you can tell her you know to be wary of the risk but to make her afraid is just ridiculous and he was saying stuff like your childhood ends when you lose your virginity which 
I feel like is a little extreme to say. And he was saying stuff like give your body away. Like the language that we use to talk to girls about sex really needs to change because we're only talking to girls like this. We're only talking to girls like this. And we're not talking to boys like this. We're making girls feel afraid for taking part in something that's just so natural. And I'm not saying like go out, have sex with anybody you please. It's normal. Like if you want to do that, that's fine. But it's just like we don't have to teach girls that sex is this big scary thing and that you're no longer clean, that you're dirty once you have sex. Um, Cause that's just not how it works. And we're, you're just scaring, you're just scaring girls. You're just scaring girls into feeling bad about this. And it's just like, it's an unhealthy mindset that we're teaching girls. And I, like I said, Angela Simmons, like there was no reason for her to feel bad losing her virginity at 28. She was a grown ass adult. Um, and feeling guilty, like, like <laughs> I think she said she called her daddy and cried. Like, like that's just, it's just insane. It should not be happening like that. It's just really bad. And something else he said that really bothered me was like, he said that, oh, think about the household. How is the high, how is the household? Because Jada basically said something along the lines of the thing is, if this was your son, would you be reacting the same way? And Ti said this thing that people say all the time, and I really just don't get, where they're like, okay, but think about how the household has changed, okay? Um, if my son goes out and sorry, if my son goes out and gets a girl pregnant. The household isn't really changing. He's not bringing a baby home. But if my daughter goes out and gets someone pregnant, that baby is in my house. And I'm just like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, are you telling your son it's okay to not be in the child's life? Because that does affect your household if your child, if your son gets somebody pregnant, just because the girl not living in your house, that's still his child. So are you trying to say that it's okay for him not to be part of that child's life? Essentially, is that what we're saying here? I feel like I'm not, I'm talking in circles, but what I'm saying is that like, you're saying it doesn't affect the household, but to me, for it not to affect the household, that means that he's not part of the child's life because it should affect the household. And if he's not part of the child's life, you're okay with that. So you're okay with your son being a Debbie father. And I'm pretty sure that it was talked about how his son has definitely had sex or whatever. And and he's younger than Deja or something. He's definitely already had sex and T.I. is okay with it. So it was literally just your daughter because again, girls are seen as dirty and unclean once they have sex. Which to me, I'm just like, doesn't that say more about men than us? Like why is it that once y'all partake in this activity with us, we are seen as dirty and unclean? And I'm saying, like, doesn't that say more about men than us? Why is it us that are looked at as unclean? These views are only held out for, for women. Also, I fucking cackled at the fact that this man, the actual patriarchy is, um, or patriarchal. Um, it's just like, as big as your vocabulary is, all them damn big words he was using, and you don't know what that mean? You don't know what that mean? Okay. <laughs> It's not like a big deal, but for some reason it was really funny to me. Um, so yeah, that's it for this first edition, first video of my Blab and Beat. I hope you guys enjoyed. And of course, please like, let's talk. If you have an opposing view, if there's something that you thought, like if you watch the Red Table Talk or if you've been keeping up with the TI thing, like let talk to me down below. Let me know what you were thinking. Let me know your thoughts. Let's discuss. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, spread love, be kind. Bye, guys.